Hey there, Philip here. This is another of my snippet videos. And today I'm going to talk about um, an important departure from Google. And uh, so if you're not really interested in Flutter or Google or anything like that, and like internal politics, then uh, you can safely skip this one. This is not going to be about giant robot game or anything else. It's going to be mostly interesting, I think, for people who follow Flutter. So this week, I think, um, or maybe late last week, um, Hixie uh, left Flutter. I mean, he left Google. That's a big difference. So Hixie, if you don't know, he was one of the co-founders of the Flutter project. He has uh, been uh, very active on GitHub of the Flutter organization. Like basically everything that you read in terms of like the readme, the guidelines, uh, the triage, was written by him or largely written by him and a lot of the things like and he's very active on a lot of the like more important issues so and you probably if you know github flutter github then you know this icon that's him so it doesn't actually look like that <laughs> uh, so anyway he he left google i had some indications about this a few um i don't know maybe weeks maybe months ago uh, but uh, but now it's official, and he wrote an article about why, basically. Wait a minute. Uh, that's him and uh, this one. I'm talking about this one. And so it's a really good read. I really recommend. I'll kind of go through this during this video, but I really recommend actually reading it and not taking things out of context. So anyway, um, he starts with like... So basically he says like the, probably the most important reason for his departure from Google is the culture getting worse, the kind of the ownership of things and, and so on. And I think as someone who also was at Google and left Google two years ago, I can relate. I did not leave because of that, because I, I left, I have a video, hopefully I don't forget to, to put it there. I have a video about why I left Google that I made that day <laughs> uh, that, that I, or, I mean, that that month or something like that, that, that I uh, left Google. Uh, but my reasons were mostly like family and so on and so forth. But I also felt that kind of same thing as Ian so or Hixie. So I, um, I can relate and I can confirm and maybe add a little bit more context. The, also, why am I even talking about this? Because, well, Hixie is, is one of the co-founders, but we've seen um, Eric Seidel left a few, I don't know, is it a year ago now? Um, uh, but also Tim Sneath left, like a lot of high profile people left in the past year, right? So it's um, it can be worrying. And I'll get to like the future of Flutter in the later part of the video, but right now it's just like, why do I even care about this? It's just one person leaving. No, it's not. All right, so Ian starts his article by saying, well, uh, first of all, th that kind of, uh, there's this tendency of everyone to look at Google, even before I joined Google, to, to look at a big company and assume that all it does is it does it for money and for power, right? And that is not true. Like, even if you're working for a big company, you are still a person who wants to do things um, that are good. Like, like I'm sorry, but <laughs> I know that for a lot of, like, there's, there's this tendency to be cynical about everything, but most people that can do good uh, that, that have the ability to do good, want to do good, okay? They just like, if you, if you, I just, I just went to the post office and I saw this like guy who I thought that, uh, you know, that, that you would be probably scared of if you <laughs> met him on a darkened alley. And then I, and then we went in the same direction. He was faster than me. And then an older person um, 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 dropped his walking sticks, and this person that looked like a, like a like 
I don't want to say criminal, but like looked like a criminal, just went and helped this person, right? So, so yes, like people are like good. It makes them feel good. So even people in big corporations want to do good. And if the corporation will let them, they will. So I saw this, for example, when I, uh, when I was joining Google, a lot of the flag that Google got was because of China, right? So Google, uh, a lot of companies were operating in China and China is not a free country and it is a totalitarian country. And so a lot of people were like, well, oh, look, Google is also uh, like working in China. So therefore they're evil, right? And at the time Google said like, don't be evil and so on and so forth. So it was a very easy target. Like you being in China proves that you are actually evil. And look, I was backpacking through China. I know how the internet looked like. And I actually felt that what they did, that, that Google did back then before I joined Google, so I can't take any credit, um, was actually really brave and good. And the, the what they did was whenever uh, they had to, so, okay, sorry, I had to, I have to go back. So when I was in China, I went to an internet cafe so that I could, this was way back when, uh, and I was backpacking. So I, like once in a week, I wrote an email to my family and friends and girlfriend that at the time, my wife, uh, that I am still alive and, and what's, what's going on, right? So I went to an internet cafe and since I was there, I also wanted to check the news. And so I went to bbc.co.uk, right? And it didn't say this site is censored. It just went, this page doesn't exist. Like, it was just like, what bbc.co.uk? Like, like that doesn't exist. So I tried other things like Wikipedia. No, it didn't, just, just things that you'd expect to, to, to be on the internet just weren't there and it didn't say anything about censorship. It was just like not there, right? So uh, later I learned that when you do something like this, not in an internet cafe, but at home, for example, and you like Tiananmen uh, massacre and you search for this, you would still get zero results. Um, but it would still tell you like this page doesn't exist, for example, right? But the police would know that you tried to access the site, right? So anyway, so, so what Google did back then, and I think was, was actually a good thing to do, was that if you search for something that was censored, it would give you the results. It would not give you the censored results because the censored result wouldn't even show, right? Like if, if, if they gave the result like for bbc.co.uk and you clicked it, it would be the page doesn't exist. But what they did was they said at the, on the page, on the search result page, these results were uh, censored. Like we had to censor some of the results, right? Which is something that no other company did back then. And I don't think, I don't know how it works now because it's way, way after this. But but back then that, that really angered the, the, the regime, the, the political regime in, in China because they wanted people to think that these things just don't exist. Like what censorship? It just doesn't like there's nothing, right? Um, and Google had the guts or some people at Google had the guts to say, no, actually we're, yes, we will comply with the stupid law of not showing you information, but we will tell people that we are complying with the stupid law. And, and so, People started to know that things are uh, uh, things on the Chinese internet. I mean, they knew before, but like they didn't know maybe how much of this stuff was was being censored. So anyway, this this is a very long uh, s way to uh, get to the point that even though some people at Google and other, I guess other companies want to do good, then looked at from the outside it can look like google is or that company is just being cynical and and it just wants money and so on and so forth and i've seen this several times this is just the first example that came to mind 
uh, he, to he talks about the same with the, uh, Google Books, right? So there's uh, people like Google got flagged for Google Books and Google Books was literally something that w was a good, I I'm, I'm convinced that it was a good thing um, and it wasn't trying to capitalize or, or, or anything. Um, yeah. Or at least at the core, I don't know what, uh, of course, I don't know about everything that that's, was happening there. Okay, so anyway, uh, so he says about this, that like how when he joined, which was a uh, long time before me, well, I mean, actually three, time, three years before me, uh, uh, that uh, Google felt very much as a company where you were encouraged to do good things and to, uh, at least you weren't punished by it. And people kind of did. It also, he doesn't mention this, uh, but at the time uh, it was, Google was just simpler, right? So like when I joined, there was no, an there was no Android. I mean, they, it wasn't bought yet, I guess. Maybe it existed. There was no Chrome. There was no, there, it was just like, Google was just the search engine, uh, Gmail, Maps, you know, and so everyone at Google was trying to help everyone else. It was just like a, a, little, a smallish company. <laughs> it sounds weird talking about Google as a smallish company, but like, you know, you could still, like if someone came to me and was like, oh, I have a problem with this product, I probably knew the product and I probably could at least help him a little bit. Now, after uh, many years at Google, people came to me and they were like, I have a problem with this product and I had no idea that product even exists. <laughs> or maybe I knew it, but I've never used it, right? So it it's just grew as a company. And I think, um, so So what, what he's lamenting and what I saw as well is how things just went downhill. Uh, people stopped... Uh, knowing about all the things that were happening at Google and people also stopped caring. And that's kind of the, the main thing, right? You want to, you want, want people to care in the company about users, about doing the right thing and so on and so forth. And when you are a small company, when you like one founder, of course you care, you know, uh, like when I have a game out or when I have anything out, I, I, I care deeply about every single piece of feedback and every single problem that I find. Now, of course, if my company was much larger, at some point I would have to be like, okay, so well, I have 1 million users, I can't care about 1 million people. I have 1 million issues, okay, I can't um, care about all 1 million issues at the same time in the same, you know, uh, intensity. So these things, obviously happen to, to companies that grow. What's interesting is how some companies just get to ba a bad place very soon. And Google, through its culture and through some of its values, was able to, v for a long time, keep this. Like when I, when I joined Google, it was 10 years old, right? So a lot of companies are not 10 years old when you, uh, when, when they are already shit. So, so these, these things happen and it, it is happening at Google. Of course, you get people who are really like they're just for the career or for the money, which is fine. It's, it's, a, it's a completely okay way to lead your life to just like go to work for, for money, of course. But you can probably imagine how that's not a good thing for uh, the the users and the products, right? So uh, I mean, in if if it's if it becomes the norm, uh, if there are if there is no one at the company, or if there uh, only a minority minority of the company actually cares about uh, the product and and the mission and the users, then you'll it it'll show. Okay, so, uh, 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 right, he talks about G+. Really recommend reading this, the whole thing. Uh, and then um, he also talks about 
oh, I love that he he talks about Tao and the UXR team. He also later talks about uh, the uh, 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 the other people in the team, um, Jayong and and so on. And I think that's that's really powerful. By the way, it's just like a by by the way thing. It doesn't have anything to do with Google itself. But the I don't think a lot of a lot of engineering products or like APIs or SDKs have even a UXR team, a user experience research team. Flutter has, and I think, and I I, I kind of think that also, it seems like Hixie thinks as well that this is a huge differentiator. If you have people in the team that actually their job is to look at what developers, uh, how developers use your SDK. And it's not just a random thing, but it's, it's actually people who are used to doing UXR research. Uh, then I don't know why this always happens to me. What is going on here? Uh, there's a light that just goes off. Anyway, um, yeah, so when, when you can do it, um, then uh, then that that is that is fantastic for for the product. Cool. So he talks about this and this, and then he talks about how it went uh, down uh, later and how just basically people started appearing that had no business in leading the the company or leading parts of the company. A lot of middle management that just. Uh, you know, or higher mid middle management, they just like, just went there for promotions or whatever. And and at some point you are not even sure like, what, like why are we doing this? Why are we spending all this time and effort to, you know, work on this? And it just is demoralizing and it's bad. So, um, so yeah, I I agree with this. Uh, and I also agree that it, it's not too late for Google um, to correct course, uh, but it's definitely the clock is ticking. You know, the things are n not as they were. And it's possible, he, he's not saying this, but it's possible that it's just a reverse, like it's just inevitable for any publicly traded company, as someone said on Mastodon, you, you just go to this level. And I think that's actually good because other companies can, can you know, like you don't want the big companies to be always big and always the most powerful. You want them to decay over time so that new companies and new ideas come uh, and take over, right? So I'm, I'm not going to cry for Google. All right, uh, that's, that's one thing. And then, um, then about Flutter, you know, what the, what is the, the future of Flutter, I guess. Everyone is, you know, uh, getting out of Google, so what's going on? All right, so first of all, again, Hixie says, I just realized he is like, it's his, you know, weblog, and uh, he's calling it a natural log. That's good. That's cute. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, so uh, he's uh, all right. He's, he says that future that he is going to keep uh, working f for Flutter as because Flutter is open source. So this is something that is amazing news, right? And also this is something that he's been doing before. So I don't think we'll see a lot less of Hixie. Maybe we actually will see more of Hixie on the GitHub because he's no longer going to be fighting, you know, internal uh, little political things and like making, doing meetings and, and so on and so forth. So, so that's cool. It's kind of what I'm trying to do, right? I'm still in the Flutter community. I'm not like on GitHub every day, on, on Flutter slash Flutter GitHub and every day. But uh, but I try to to be around, and uh, it's uh, because I'm really 
I'm still excited about the about the SDK. I'm still excited about the community, and I think it's it's it has a very bright future. So so that's that's one thing. So we're not losing Hixie as a, uh, as a contributor to to Flutter. Um, but what about all the other people? What about you know like if the culture is really getting that bad? Like is it going to just you know is Google going down in two years now? I, I don't think so. I think um, Google is not going down in the next few years. And also, there are still, I'm talking about the people who, who left, but there are still amazing, amazing people who are at the company, in Flutter especially. I know the Flutter team the most. Uh, and and they are amazing, and they are still amazing, and they've always been amazing, and, and they work on stuff that I feel is is really important. And I and I think they also know this. So I'm not worried about Flutter in, in the, you know, short to medium term. In the long term, you could say, well, what if Google stopped funding Flutter in general, you know? So that, that's kind of the... That's kind of the only thing that would uh, would be, I think, kind of terrible for Flutter because as much as we all know that Flutter is open source, uh, if it wasn't for the very hard work of tens of engineers, probably more, tens of engineers that work on Flutter and Dart every day, uh, that are very well paid. Did I say that already? Then Flutter would not be going anywhere. Like it, it would. Maybe we could somehow maintain it so that it doesn't deteriorate too quickly. But yeah, it it needs a very wealthy sponsor, and right now the sponsor is Google. Uh, so. Why do I not think that's going to happen in uh, any time soon? Uh, the reason is that Flutter is Google's, in some, in many important ways, it is Google's most successful open source, like developer project, right? If you look at GitHub uh, top projects uh, trending, I don't know, is this, is this it? Is there Flutter here? 21? I don't think so, man. I think it's uh, top 100 stars. Uh, it, by the number of contributors and by many other things that, um, that matter, Flutter is Google's most important project so far, and, or at this time. And uh, I don't, I also a lot of things at Google are written in Flutter and so on and so forth. So I, I'm not worried about that. Uh, unless like someone gets really crazy and is like, okay, you know, Google needs to focus all, all of its money on AI <laughs> and nothing else matters. And we're just going to um, fire, you know, everyone else, then yes, then Flutter also goes. But then we'll have bigger problems, I think. Uh, I mean, there's a bunch of things that Google does. Um, yeah, but not not many that I really care about except for Flutter. So anyway, I hope this was helpful. I don't know. It's, it's been rambling about, you know, Hixie coming, uh, going to open source, I guess, out of Google. Uh, I feel the same. Uh, if you want to know more about this, uh, of course, go read the article. And see you next time. Hopefully next time I'm going to talk about something less depressing and more interesting and uh, hopefully about something that I'm working on for a change. Cool. Cheers.